All right. Uh, first, I want to kick it off about uh, March Madness. And uh, I'm super fired up for women's basketball and Vic Schaefer getting a one seed um, hosting here uh, Friday. I think it's 2 o'clock. So hopefully everybody comes out and supports what they're doing. And uh, obviously tomorrow night our men's basketball team uh, with a great opportunity. Got a pretty good seed with a seven seed. And, uh, you know, as, as they start their journey as well. So this is an exciting time. So looking forward to supporting, um, you know, RT and Vic and, and their teams and, and what they're doing here uh, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, for us, uh, this was a pretty good first day. Um, you know, and I'm always hesitant to, to lay too much praise after one practice. Uh, like I'm always a little hesitant to be too, too critical after one practice. But I, I thought that, uh, you know, it was pretty evident that the energy was really good out there at practice. Um, it was it was pretty evident uh, the amount of depth that we have. I mean, we, we have a, we, this is the most numbers that we've had in a spring practice since we've been here. And um, you know, I think that's a, a combination of a few things. I think the tran the transfer portal has affected that, where you can have guys you know kind of replace players right away. I think that's a byproduct of so many early admits, guys coming mid year. Um, and in the end, you know, the, the fact that we were able to two spot all of our team stuff uh, in practice and that we were able to go ones, twos, threes, and fours, and everybody on the team getting reps and, and improving and getting better. Uh, I thought the, the coaches really, you know, demanding uh, the fundamentals, the techniques that are needed in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams uh, w was evident as well today. Um, but again, there, there's a ton of things that we need to get better at and we need to work on. Um, but, but for a first day spring practice, um, I, was, I was definitely pleased. Coach, when you have uh, a new set of receivers working with quarterbacks, what are you looking at you know, so early in the process? Well, one thing for me is are, are we being coachable, right? And um, you, know, you guys were out there, I think, for some of our you know, routes on air type stuff. And, you know, the, the details in, in those routes of the landmarks on where the receivers are supposed to be, the timing of those throws, um, because that's how you develop trust. Um, and then that, that subtle communication between a quarterback and receiver that will grow over time uh, as we continue to move through it. But uh, again, I, I'm just looking for guys that can, that can do what we're asking of them, do it to the best of their ability, because we're a very talented group, but mm -hmm. doing it to the best of their ability and then the quarterbacks trusting those guys that they're going to be where they're supposed to be. And so that, that's going to be a bit of a process as we go. Um, but like I said, today was, was a good start to it. Um, I, I thought there were some, some high-level plays that got made. Um, again, I think there were some things that we're going to have to go and correct off this tape. Um, but but uh, as we grow, hopefully the rapport with Quinn and Arch and those guys <coughs> continues to move in, in a positive direction as we go throughout spring. Steve, Steve, last year you really preached the uh, versatility of last year's group, and you talked about being able to identify that starting last spring. I know it's only one practice, but I'm just curious where the team kind of falls in that regard as far as the versatility that you mentioned. Well, I, I think we have that as well again this year. Um, you know, I would say just as a team in general, I, I don't think we're going to be a one-dimensional team that's going to have to rely – uh, on one phase of the game to be overly just dominant. Uh, I'd love for all three phases to do that, um, but, but I think we're going to be, at, when, when the dust settles, we're going to be a really good offensive team uh, that will have balance. Uh, I think we're going to be a very good defensive football team um, that's going to be able to have some versatility and man zone and pressure things. Uh, and I think we're going to be really good on special teams. You know, just a couple glimpses I saw today, we've got quality returners. Um, you know, I, I, we're always going to be uh, aggressive in our intent in the way that we call it. Uh, and so for us, when, when, we're, when we've got that balance in all three phases with the quality of players that we have, uh, ideally that, that sets that versatility up for us where we can win games a multitude of ways. Um, but that's, like I said, that's going to that's gonna be a process and take some time. Um, I, I will say just first glimpse offensively, we've got some really versatile players offensively, you know, and, and from a receiver standpoint, we were moving guys from outside to inside, playing them in the slot, playing them outside. We moved our runners around probably more today than we have a first practice of spring ball um, and trying to play to their strengths as well. And, and I think that helps when you've got really experienced quarterback who really understands the offense and he can manage some of that stuff at the line of scrimmage. Steve, is it hard to get a full gauge of what you have until you know uppers come on and then pads come on? 
is the tough on day once it gets a full um, without it, without question, you know, I mean, I refer to today's practice as underwear, um, <laughs> and, and, and we don't play football in underwear, right? I mean, we play it in armor. Um, and so you find out more as we go, but this gives a, a good sense and a gauge of just kind of where we're at from a starting point. And this was a pretty good starting point for us. The, um, you can tell the guys have been in their playbooks and studying. Um, you can tell that the intent of our coaches, um, you know, obviously a couple new coaches, and you can feel their their passion. Uh, you know, Coach Nancy and Coach Baker, they were coaching at a high level, very intense. Um, the players responded to that. Um, but but ultimately, as we grow, you know, we're in a teaching phase of what we're trying to do. But then there's going to come a point where there's a level of physicality that, that comes with, with the speed and the, and the things that we're doing. And then that ability to do it down after down after down. And, and so that's part of the growth as we, as we kind of move through these practices to get ultimately to practice 15 of the spring game. Steve, when the, weights, when the weights come out, everyone's eyes you know, are always looking who's gained good weight and all that. Yep. Um, Sadir Mitchell at 372, Blackshire at 261, and Savion Red at 240. Can you just talk about what you're seeing from, from those guys? Yeah, but probably all three of them a little heavier than we would like. Um, but, you know, we're, we're in March, right? Yeah. And, and we're, not, we're not playing a game until, um, until, you know, September. I guess it's August 31st this year. Um, and one thing I know, some of that weight will naturally come off through spring practice. Uh, the other thing I know, when, when we start running in June and July in, in DKR at about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, that weight comes off uh, a little easier then, too. Um, but, but again, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned. Um, I would like that weight to get down for all three of those guys. I think they'll be better players uh, when that weight's down a little bit. Coach, you, you mentioned there. the word obsession on a post this morning. How do you define that word, and what positives do you see in the word obsession? Yeah, no, I, I think being obsessed is something like, man, you, you, one, you, you got to love what you do. You're obsessed with what you love to do. Um, you have confidence in what you're doing. Um, you do it in the absence of fear. You're committed to the cause. You're committed to what you're doing. Um, and, and, and ultimately, you know, the positive of that is that you're striving towards something and that you're committed to it. Um, the, the the negative with it comes that you you go overboard with what you're trying to do and so the challenge for us is being obsessed with this mission that we're on um, but yet make sure that we're finding balance in our lives and and that we're you know we're committed to the classroom we're committed to who we are as people as much as we are committed to being the best football players that we can be What's the, what, is the, what is the challenge of breaking in like 25 newcomers and so many fresh faces uh, just getting them to go the right way. <laughs> you know, you go out to practice the first time and yeah, you, you just hope guys are where they're supposed to be. We've got a lot of moving parts when we practice. You know, I, I'm, I'm not one where I like guys standing around. And so generally when, when we're working one drill over here, we've got three other drills going on at the same time. And a lot of times a new face can get lost and be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, and then he's not getting those reps to, to do what he needs to do. But that's that goes back to when they first get here in school. You just try to get them going in the right direction, um, taking the necessary steps, being where they're supposed to be off the field, and then trying to get them to be where they're supposed to be on the field. And then that that that'll you know kind of lends itself into their play, being where they're supposed to be from play to play to play and doing what they're supposed to do. Coach, you guys have obviously lost two defensive tackles that are, might be end up being first round picks. Talk about the challenge of replacing those guys and what do you need to see from like a Colin Brought and all those guys yeah. this year to have that, that faith in them? You know, I, I think, you know, we have some probably a little bit more experience than um, maybe people will want to give us credit for. You know, Alfred is a very talented player who has matured from one year to the next to the next. And um, I think that he's he's – you know, if he continues on the progression that he's on, he's poised to have a great year. Uh, I think Vernon Broughton, again, another one of those guys that they gave us a lot of quality reps the last two seasons. And I think now more than ever, they're poised to step into that role. And, and Tia Savea, I mean, he's played a lot of football, played a lot of football at Arizona. So to have that experience of those three guys is, is helpful. And then we've got some young, talented players. You know, I think Dre Bledsoe is an extremely talented young player who's going into year three now. 
Um, I, I think Aaron Bryant is another guy that's going to now start to give us some of those reps that Alfred and Vernon gave us the last couple of years that they can give us. Um, I think a first glance, you know, Alex January is a guy who has been impressive early on in, in off-season workouts and conditioning and things. And so I think we've got that a really good mix of older veteran players who are ready for their time, um, similar, to, similar to Sweat and similar to Murphy. You know, when, when Morrow and Coburn left, they stepped into that role. And so now it's that next phase, and it's that natural progression of guys moving through the program. Coach, what about leadership overall? Yeah. You know, I think, I think one thing, we, we were talking about this as a staff. I don't know necessarily if we have just one dominant voice on this team. You know, I don't know if we have Roshan Johnson uh, as an example. But I do think we have more positive quality voices on this team. So I think our leadership is now um, kind of more all-encompassing. And, and that's what you like. You know, I'd, I'd much rather have multiple people that lead and lead in a positive way different voices at different times than relying on one or two voices because when those one or two voices aren't on that day who's leading and I think that 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 we're, we're much more spread out um, I feel I feel really confident talking to different guys on our team that have been in the program that know what it looks like um, you know I, I generally when we when we go through you know flex lines or stretch lines I like to tap into those leaders and making sure our energy's right our intents right what we're trying to get done for the day I noticed it today I was having to talk to a lot of guys and and that's a that's a really good thing um, the fact that, that we're returning so many offensive linemen we are returning Quinn um, I, I think Gunnar Helm is, is a guy who's been in the program really understands you know Jaden Blue is a guy who's really grown up is in year three in the program defensively you talk you know, we talked about Alfred and Vernon um, you know you look at it, Ethan Burke and his time here you, know, you look at a David Benda uh, Anthony Hill already young and into his career Michael Taff uh, John A. Barron uh, Jalen Gilbo so a lot of guys and I'm leaving some guys out and not intentionally but that's it's just a different team that way and that's the beauty you from year to year every team is new Every team's got to recreate their own identity and recreate their culture for that team. And so I think this year's team is a little bit different that way, that we've got a multitude of players that can lead. Uh, and as a coach, that's really comforting that, that I've got more guys that I can tap into and lean on. When you, when you, when you, brought, you, in, uh, you brought in some really good football players, transfers, you built this culture the way you want it. Um, how hard do you vet these guys? Because they're veteran guys that have been other places. Yeah. To make sure they fit into what you're trying to sell here. Well, I think that that's probably the biggest challenge of the transfer portal. Um, you know, the high school kids, when they come in, and I'm going to get to that, I'm going to answer that, but the high school kids, when they come in, we've been recruiting those high school kids for a year, two years, two and a half years, right? And think about how long we've been recruiting Colin Simmons, for example. And so you know so much about them and, and what their makeup is. The portal's very unique because – these guys go on a portal and sometimes four days later they're on your campus on an official visit. And so we really have to be diligent in doing our, 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 our process of getting to know them, tapping into the right people that have worked with them, whether it was high school coach, trainers, you know, sometimes their own coach from the school they're coming from, um, to make sure that, that they can fit in our culture, that they will thrive in our culture because we just don't want somebody that's just going to survive we want people that are going to that are really going to thrive in this environment um and and so far you know a, you know a couple months into this thing with these guys being here it seems really good you know Andrew Makuba is awesome you know he he's wired really well he's a great team guy um Amari Nyblack uh, Isaiah Bond I mean some of these guys have been really really good Trey Moore has been unbelievable of what he's brought and so uh, you know I credit our recruiting staff I credit our coaches for the work they've put in to find the right blend of players and some of them there yeah sure there's been a little bit of a transition but then they look at it and they really enjoy it I was talking to Isaiah Bond today halfway through practice about how much he enjoys now practicing in the morning and waking up every day in the morning he's like man I feel I almost feel more fresh I feel better so you never know what a guy was at one place Maybe we can even get a better version of him here. How, how would you lean on, you know, if you have an opportunity to recruit guys out of the portal you have a previous relationship with, like Isaiah, Matthew Golden, it makes that vetting process a little easier. Well, it definitely helps, you know, uh, you know, especially 
the the length of which we recruited him in like Matthew Golden I was very confident and very comfortable with because we had recruited him at length the first time around he had been on campus we had been around him been around his mom uh, so that process was was really easy you know Isaiah's was a little bit different just because of we had recruited him but he had never really been here but we still knew him um, Kendrick Blackshire you know Coach Banks had recruited him so hard in high school we had a very good understanding of him. Uh, coming out so they're all at different stages but it is extremely helpful but that doesn't mean that we're not going to recruit other kids you know I mean we're, like Silas Bolden for example we hadn't recruited him but I had a really good relationship with Jonathan Smith we got him on campus you could tell that the, the good nature of the of the of the young man and what he was made up of and so they're all different um, but it, it is helpful when you when you have a little bit of previous you know history and relationship with them how's Quinn look to you is the body shape different and how do expectations ramp up yeah I, I thought uh I, I think Quinn looks good you know I mean his body we went from where he was a couple years ago to slim himself all the way down last season to if you look at him he looks a little broader uh now uh this year and I'm hopeful we can we can maybe get you know three to five more pounds of of just strengthening him up that way uh I thought Quinn played really confident today you know and and had good command and um you know a little different for us for Quinn and I this year is my ability to talk to him through the mic and we, and we started practicing that today and I think having two years of experience of working together and now having that dialogue uh through the headset uh, I think is going to be beneficial for us what is, what's the biggest the uh, what does Quinn have to adapt to you've worked with a headset in the pros before what's the biggest thing quarterback has to adapt to um, you know, I, again, I don't know if it's just Quinn. I think it's he and I, you know, because, again, I, the headset specifically. yeah, no, it's just hearing it, you know, and as opposed to the signals. I mean, I still think he's going to look to the sideline, but yet hearing that call and then communicating that with the, with the pertinent information that's needed. Um, and I, I think the challenge for me is how much information is – quality good information and when does it cross the threshold of too much uh, to where it's a little bit of paralysis by analysis you know because there's too much information and so um, and that's a fine line of he and I working together with some of that stuff he and I working with the offensive line and getting that communication done but um, I, th I thought it felt really comfortable for him today first time out doing it. And Steve just to clarify the NCAA is still a few weeks away from officially green lighting right the headset stuff but you're allowed to use that technology now. Yeah, we, we're we're in kind of that that phase where they're allowing us that opportunity to do that, um, in in working with the SEC and with the NCAA that that uh, that that looks like it's going to be a go for us. Can you play fall. faster or slower because of the change? Um, I think you can do both. Quite yeah. frankly, um, okay. you know, again, that it's a lot easier to, to say five words and signal five words, right. but yet you can give more, more information and, and you can have some real dialogue to where you can speed up, slow down. Um, and hopefully I can give him some information that, that allows him to play a little bit faster mm -hmm. within plays as well. How much, time, how much time is that going to save you every week? And you mentioned that, you know, it's a lot of time stuck and having to change your signals to make sure that they're going to well, I don't, I don't know if we're, we're going to totally abandon that. Um, like I said, we're, today was day one of, of working ourselves through it. Um, and and we're, we're in total base install mode. We're not in a game plan mode. So we're still teaching the foundation of our offense, which is signaling. Um, but I, there, as we get closer to the season, uh, we get start getting into training camp. I'm sure we're going to have different modes and mechanisms of getting play calls in. Um, but, again, we want to teach the foundation of signaling because, God forbid, the headset goes out in DKR for whatever reason. I still got to get the play into our players, and so we we we, we want to always want to kind of have contingency plans available. So we still want to teach the foundation of our offense, which is signaling, uh, but yet getting used to the new way of having the ability to communicate to the quarterback. Do you have any I'm idea what uh, what defensive player or position you would? want to have that we're still yeah we're still going through that it's uh you know i think the natural thing is like in the nfl it's it's your you know one of your linebackers the guy who's connected to the front and the back end that can that can communicate um but because of the space of college football uh and because of the hashes and the width of the field uh, we've kicked around possibly it being a defensive back maybe our star 
uh, because of where he aligns and that ability to communicate. So we'll see. We, we, we're still working through that. Again, it's still very new. Um, and the idea that people aren't going to go no huddle uh, just because there's a headset really isn't true. And so you're still going to have to signal some defensively as well. Coach, uh, um, you know, used to bother you about JT Sanders and remember we see more of him, right? And we saw it obviously last year. Is that the same progression for John T. Cook when you start talking about a five star and what they need to do to, in order to get on the field more? Like, give me an idea where he's at. As well. Yeah, no, I, I think I think again, player development is something that you know we take a lot of pride in in our program, um, on and off the field. And you know, I, I think one of the challenges is when when we first got here. You know, I think JT might have been the only five star in that class. You know, that was you know a top twenty twenty five player in the country. Uh, according to you guys. <laughs> um, hopefully, we're recruiting more high-quality players over time, and there's going to be more guys that are going to be in that developmental you know, process early in their career, Jonte being one of those guys. You know, he had an opportunity last year to play behind possibly two first-round draft picks and another guy who's going to play in the NFL. And so how much do you attack that year to try to improve your game. I, I thought Jonte had a really good practice day from, from the naked eye without looking at the tape and um, kind of doing what he was asked of him, made plays when the ball came his way, had really positive energy out there on the field. Um, but, th but there's a lot of guys that are in that fold that hopefully they can continue to grow uh, in the program as the years move forward. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys, thank you. <laughs>